What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is things Americans do that confuse the rest of the world. We've done a few like this before, haven't yeah. we? Um, I don't know how this one escaped us. Hmm. It seems a very popular one, which I have seen in the comments every so often, but I've kind of always thought we've done it. And I think that is because the titles are very similar on some of them, yeah. aren't they? That you kind of, you see that, well, we've, we've kind of done that subject, but there's been enough requests for it, hasn't there? Yeah. So we're doing it today. Hopefully you guys enjoy this content. If you do, smash that like button. We'd seriously appreciate it. How many likes do we want on this video? Or would like, not one. You know, we're, we're not picky. We don't mind if we don't get there, but... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, this is a tough question to ask, clearly. 2,000. 2,000, yeah. Smash that like button. Let's get to 2,000 likes on this video. 3,000 if we're lucky. Why not? Smash that like button, guys. Um, I'm keen for this one. Again, we do these reactions. Confuse the rest of the world. We're the rest of the world, aren't we? Well, yep. We're, we're one part of the world. Yeah, but so, we're in comparison. Like, in comparison. We're in not, the question, in the, the title of this, yeah, we are the rest of the world. We're part of them. So we'll let you know if it confuses us, if it's strange. And we may have heard a few of these. Tipping's definitely going to come up, isn't so it? So far, running for a car park with American flag is just kind of confuse me yeah we don't do that with a british flag we do don't we? do that so um yeah maybe that's number one if it is that's confused yeah. us already let's get straight into this guys smash the like button smash the subscribe button and let's sit let's check out things americans do that confuse the rest of the world let's go the united states of america is the land of the free the home of the brave and also the home to a lot of weird stuff that most other countries don't do this former british colony has truly grown up to be its own quirky person the following 10 things tend to confuse non-americans and you can find non-natives of the us of a discussing them all across the internet only if we've discussed it before mm. number 10 Tipping. Yep. America is definitely Always isn't the tipping, only country it? in the world where tipping is a common practice. In fact, if you're curious about what should jobs... We, because there's a lot of new people to the channel since we've done a video like this, should we clear up our view on tipping, I guess? I think tipping, I think, would always do regardless of the service, but I think the, the amount of tip that you get reflects on how the service is. Yeah, because obviously in England it's a lot less, a lot of less people tip and it's not exactly 10% or 20%. It's just how much, um, like how... I mean, we them. always tip ourselves anyway. Yeah, like if we get a takeaway, we'll always give some money to the, the delivery is, driver. It's just a little strange for us when we come to a milk and it's like, yeah, boom, 15%. We understand. I think it's, it's more the fact that it's like on your receipt. Definitely, and I don't think we understood it as much when we actually went to America. We, we did no, do tipping. We did do it, we did it Because we yeah. want to be respectful. Um, but we understand now it's because it's cheap food. Yeah, the wait, yeah. waiters and waitresses don't get paid as much, do they? Yeah. Um, so next time, even though we didn't moan one bit last time, no. we'll just we'll understand, understand it. More. Yeah, I think we'll always tip. It's, Definitely. It just, I think, depends on how much you tip, how much percent you tip, depending on the service you receive. 100%, but it's more understandable. I think that's a word, isn't it, for us now? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, uh, but that is that Before, views. I'm not going to lie, I did think, why am I being made to pay for something that i don't that yeah when when we didn't really I didn't know. know yeah, like, yeah. I, I now i know i'm like well now i understand now it makes sense yep <laughs> get tipped in what countries there's a website called who to tip.net that breaks down the tipping customs of the world oh wow but america is certainly the country where tipping place. is the most prevalent in most countries and cultures around the world tipping is simply an optional charge should you feel your server deserves to be rewarded for their efforts however in america you should always give a tip of around 10 to 20 percent especially at restaurants tipping is a big part of american culture which seems odd to outsiders people may dislike tipping but it's probably here to stay in america the unspoken system is that food prices in restaurants are lower than they should be because tips allow the restaurant to pay their wait staff less they can then charge you less for food at least that's what you can try telling your friend the next time he doesn't want to contribute to the tip at a restaurant because he recently saw reservoir dogs while a lot of people argue that tipping is a good thing because it increases the quality of service you receive, this isn't actually true. Cornell University published a study that revealed the real reason people tip, more or less, is basically random. And customers who receive great service tip on average just 1% more than those who don't. Lots of people around the world look at America and ask, why not pay service workers a normal amount of money and just so make food more question. expensive? Well, it is, isn't Number it? Number nine, <laughs> have few says... vacation days. You you tip because you pay less for your food, but why not just pay the normal price and not tip? I know, pay the workers. I food. guess it's not their choice, so you it's, want the waitress and waiter to get I feel it. Like don't it's you? A, I feel like it's like an American culture thing. Like it just makes Definitely. America 
special and different. It's Definitely. No, I rate it as well. To be fair, I rate it. I'm not against it. It's, it's, it, as long as you know and you understand it, it's like, yeah, it's nice giving more to the waiter. Like, oh, thanks for your service. You know what I mean? It feels better than just paying more for food. I feel like for, for them food. as well, it makes their job a bit more yeah. enjoyable. Is, no, you know, well, I, I don't think it makes them to them. They just want my, <laughs> they yeah, just want want my money, money, you know what I mean? Fair, but like, but they, probably, um, they probably do give you a better service. I guess as well, they try and give you better service yeah. because... It's not guaranteed as it's, it's nothing worse than it's a moody, mandatory, but it's not guaranteed, is like it? Like than a moody waiter or waitress. I mean, exactly. So I think it's a bit yeah. of both as well. Days. Americans don't go on vacation as much as the rest of the world does. Oh, we love vacation. On average, we're given only twelve <laughs> vacation days by our work, as opposed to Europeans who get between twenty-five and thirty. I get twenty-five. Perhaps more interesting. You get a lot. Is the I get about that Americans weeks. on average only use I'm ten of their twelve given vacation you days, do? whereas <laughs> Europeans tend to use all of theirs. I guess Americans just can't bring themselves to leave the office while there's still work to be done. And while it may suggest Europeans are lazy, according to a mountain body it. of research, it's actually counterproductive not to take a vacation, as breaks help us rejuvenate, increasing our productivity over time. In the US, the school holidays are the same as, not, not the same dates or anything, but the same idea that teachers get the school holidays off. I imagine it's it the is. same. I so it's not it like is. it's just a UK thing. It's no, but in terms of... And like, you guys get a longer not talking, summer than we do. I don't do. think we're talking public working jobs. We're on about like my job in architecture. Okay. Are, instead of me getting 25, yeah. so, 30 like days. They'd get, teachers would get the same amount of time as me. I assume so. Let us know. If you're a teacher, how many holiday days do you get? Do you get your six-week holidays? Do you get all that? They get more. They get like two months off for summer. Let us know in the comments. But again, that's a public one, isn't it? So it's different mm. to... I think it's all about just general private ones. Yeah. You only get 12 days instead of 25 or something like that. Which is brutal. Yeah. That is absolutely brutal. I can cope with 12 days off. So that's like not even two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. It's mental. Time. Not only that, when us Americans do go on vacation, we also travel less internationally than citizens of most other countries. So but big, that it makes may sense. be related to so our limited places. number of vacation days. 12 days just doesn't allow for an international trip as well as 30 does. As the time and cost of travel to international destinations is so great, according to the Department of Commerce, American international travelers spent 42% of the cost of their entire trip simply on the travel to and from their destination. Wow. It's then not too surprising that most Americans don't even have a passport. Only 42% of U.S. citizens own a passport, whereas 76% of English citizens do. That means at least 58% of Americans haven't even like left this. the U.S. Okay. Well, the, when you get the new one, when you get the update, it's blue. Oh, there you go. That was just so random. It's so random. <laughs> but also, that leads on to, like, so, you, so a lot of, 58% uh, of Americans don't have passports. So does that mean you can travel the, state to state on a photographic ID? Yeah. Like a driving license? You yeah. Have to take, so it's like, no, because it's not in Texas. It's like us going to England. Because you're not yeah, going but, international. but like, it's so big, isn't it? Like, yeah, but it's a state. It's the same country, isn't it? Yeah, it's like Rotham going to Sheffield. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. It's just it's just a state. <laughs> Need a passport to travel to the rest of the world? This is an odd characteristic of such a prosperous nation. While it's partly due to limited vacation days, it may also be because Americans lack the desire to travel as much as the rest of the world. Number eight: food preferences. When you go to a restaurant in America, oh. you're probably going to get a lot of food, like nachos, at least a lot more than most other nations would serve. It's a popular topic of discussion amongst non-Americans online. Many European tourists admit they would frequently just order one item off the menu and share it with another person. America does it big. And for non-Americans, the size options at fast food restaurants <laughs> perfectly illustrate this. Take a look at this image by a Japanese citizen in 2011, comparing the sizes of McDonald's like drinks in America versus Japan. Just the medium Japanese thing, cup Japan. is the exact mm -hmm. same size as the small American cup, and the American medium cup is larger than the Japanese large. But McDonald's is on the small size. Here are the small sizes at a number of vendors, showing just how much larger a small cup is in America. While many around the world like to joke about how it proves Americans are fat, the truth is a lot of them take away their leftovers and carryout boxes to eat throughout the week. See, I write that, you know, you got, lunch. We do that? You got lunch for the next day, haven't you? We yeah. do that with our small portions, but we still do that mm -hmm. and eat it. But um, I write the idea. Still. American food is vastly different to food found in the rest of the world. For one, non-Americans are, on the whole, less obsessive about peanut butter. Brian Sternthal, a professor of marketing at Northwestern University's Kellogg School of Management, has said that in many parts of the world, peanut butter is regarded as unpalatable American curiosity. For example, like according to Statista, 
Americans eat a kilogram of it per year, compared to 100 grams eaten per person per year in Europe. That's 10 times the amount Europeans eat. Other American food anomalies that have confused Europeans include comparatively small fruit and vegetable aisles full of fruits and vegetables that will we cost you a lot more than they would across the Atlantic. We? As well as we do have quite big fruit and vegetables. Oh yeah, like you come in, that's the first thing you see in the first shop, thing you isn't see, it? Yeah. It's an overabundance of it. highly processed, <laughs> sweet, and don't. salty foods, and so-called cheese that, that can be sprayed out. We've got that, and we, we're going to give that a go at some point, aren't yeah. we? I am super keen to, well, I don't know if keen's the right word. I'm a bit scared to give it a go, but we are. Yeah. <laughs> I can. Number seven, college sports. In America, college sports are almost as popular as professional sports. In some areas, they're actually more popular. People will have barbecues outside of stadiums for hours before the games start, paint their faces, and hate on rival academic institutions. College athletics are taken just as seriously by the fans, who don't care that the players aren't as good as the pros and aren't even getting paid. This may be baffling to our neighbors, but there is an explanation for this American pastime of watching what are literally amateur games. Unlike most fun-sized European countries, America is massive. There are lots of places that just aren't anywhere near a major city where you could go and see a professional team play. Colleges are the next best thing, and there's bound to be one of them it's nearby incredible at college least. Games, college football and basketball also actually predate those sports professional leagues, so college athletics culture has been around forever. Number 6. Prescription Drug Commercials Non-Americans who travel to the U.S. are often surprised to find that there are advertisements for prescription drugs on regular television. You can't go and buy them from stores, so the commercials urge viewers to ask their doctor about them. In 2016, yeah, so that's a bit dodgy, isn't it? Mm, yeah, I don't know. I we, don't we, know. we don't have that, but it's just pushing you to go and get the drugs, yeah. isn't it? This drug's available. If you've got this pain, go, 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 go get it. That, yeah. that is very dodgy, isn't it? Yeah, we don't have that. Nah, <laughs> not at all. In Kantar Media, a firm that tracks multimedia advertising, reported that nearly 800,000 prescription drug advertisements were aired on television, wow. which was a 65% increase from just four years prior. Basically, the reason these commercials don't exist in other countries is because they aren't legal in other countries. In fact, the only other country where these kinds of commercials exist is New Zealand. The US pharmaceutical industry is huge. It generated $425 billion in 2015. If they're allowed to advertise, of course they're going to. And it works. Direct-to-consumer advertised drugs tend to sell better than drugs that aren't. But they're controversial, and it seems the reason America allows them comes down to our free speech protections under the First Amendment. Governments of most countries around the world think they're dangerous, and the research suggests they're not wrong. Even the American Medical Association has called for a ban on them, as these advertisements have been proven by studies to broaden the scope of who gets treated with prescription drugs. They also lead to patients being influenced to take newer, less effective drugs that often cost more. For example, Vioxx, which was later withdrawn as it caused life-threatening side effects such oh as increasing days. the risk of heart attack and strokes. Number 5. Soccer America, of course, isn't the only country that plays soccer, but we are one of the only countries that calls the game you play with your feet soccer and the one You probably don't care what it's called, do you? I don't care. I don't care either. I, I love football. I even call it soccer if to you, you say, guys. If a British person says football and an American person says soccer, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, me too as well. You say oh. soccer to me. And if I'm talking I to someone... I kind of like soccer, to be fair. I won't go that far because like, it's weird because I know football is football, so I will always say that over here. But if someone says soccer to me... I know, you know but I ain't going to shoot. And if it is someone American, I will always try and say soccer because then it's... gets confusing for them. Get rid of any confusion with American football. And I say soccer in my videos. No issue at all with it. Like, call whatever you want. It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> when you play with your hands, football. We stand with countries like Australia, Korea, South Africa, and Italy in not calling the sport football. Understandably, it confuses most of the world. So, what is the origin of this counterintuitive name? Soccer is an abbreviation of association, which came from association football, the official name for the game. The suffix er was added as a common jocular slang term of the time. The reason the name is stuck is because American football developed in the mid-19th century, evolving from the British game of rugby. Back then, rugby was loosely known as football, but it was often called rugby to make the distinction. Yeah, because that's a very confusing mm. thing. A rugby club, it's a lot of, a, it's like, rugby whatever like Rotherham Titans football club mm. in their name it, it actually says football club for a rugby team so it's like you got football you got rugby which has football clubs 
and then you got medical for it, it can get confusing. Yeah, I lost already. <laughs> Definitely. Sports were about moving the ball forward, but as the game developed across the pond, Americans developed different rules about how you were allowed to do it and what you could wear. The most popular rule set in England ended up being the one where you can only use your feet. And the most popular rule set in America ended up being the one where you get to smash into each other. Hmm. Hence why the two totally different sports have the same names in the two countries. Number go. four, not including sales tax. Wherever there's a discussion of American sales tax on the internet, you can find non-Americans telling their tales of being shocked at the final price because they didn't realize that sales tax wasn't included. In most countries, the price tag on an item includes the part you have to pay to the government so they can build roads and other things. But not here in the US. This is because sales tax in America can vary by county. So something could cost us. I think there was a video on all different sales taxes by state. I know it's fair, but I think mm. we need to do that video. Because, yeah. I mean, it froze, us, it froze us off when we were in New York, didn't it? Yeah. And I'm sure even when we go next, it would just be something you just automatically forget about. Yeah, because like, we're so used to having it like, yeah, built in. You pick up a, a toilet roll for a dollar or some art, and you, you're like, that's a dollar, and then it's like, oh, that's one dollar five. I think it's worse when you come with cash and you have the exact oh, amount, and then you forget that the tax is added. That must be so annoying. It hasn't happened to me. I don't know if it happened to... Did it happen to you in New York? No, I don't, I don't think, think it did. did. Well, I don't know. If you was a kid and you had one dollar... But like, I remember like going to McDonald's and knowing that I had, I had a pound, which meant I could get a burger. Yeah. If I went to McDonald's in America and, you had and I had one dollar... And I'd be like, oh, yay. And then I'd be like, no, sorry, it's one, like, 49. I'm yeah, like, they've added three cents on it. <laughs> You'd be fuming, wouldn't you? But I guess you're used to it, aren't you? You know, if you, if you live there, like you, if you, know live there you know what's going on, don't like you? Like, we know about VAT, and it, I think it is on the receipt VAT, but we just automatically know it's included, yeah. so we don't think about it. I mean, in Jersey, it's a bit different. We have this thing called GST, and sometimes... That's only, that's import tax, and that's a yeah, bit different. but sometimes it's added at the till, isn't it? Sometimes it's not included on... Yeah, but that is import. A lot of that is import. That's my kind of... I get what you mean, but if that's kind of for people people who no, don't yeah. know. That isn't in the shop at the till. This is if you're buying something from Amazon, like, and it comes to shipping it. If it's over hundred and fifteen pound, is it? Yeah, but some shops do have it. They have the GST that you add. It just says GST added at the till, five percent or whatever. Never seen that. Yeah. There you go. I, I've learned something new. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly different amount, just a mile away. There are also very specific laws about what gets sales taxed. For instance, if you order coffee to go. There will not be sales tax in California, but if you sit down in the cafe and eat a donut, you will have to pay sales tax. Essentially, with all these rules, it becomes difficult to put things on a price tag. Number three, not using the metric system. The United States of America has no need for me. universally <laughs> accepted get, and not? logical measurement systems because Thomas Jefferson said so. In 1790, when the metric system was being developed, he simply decided not to bring it to America. So it didn't happen. America, Liberia, and Myanmar are the only countries in the world that use the imperial system. <laughs> Liberia it. uses the same units that America does, and Myanmar is a bit of a mess. They use a combination of their own totally unique Burmese measuring units, wow. American imperial units, and metric units. So they may have the distinction of being the only country with a bigger headache when it comes to this than America. But surely now that Thomas Jefferson is long dead, we could just switch over, right? Well, it isn't that simple. It would cost a lot of money to switch over the country's whole infrastructure to the metric system now that the U.S. already uses their own unique imperial system. The closest the U.S. has gotten is that today, in U.S. schools, kids learn about That's both the imperial school. and metric <laughs> system. So most of us do have a basic understanding of how the metric system works, even if we never really use it. Even if you buy a measuring tape in the U.S., it will have both imperial and metric units on there it. Throughout American do. history, there have yeah, been... Yeah, I should do as well. I do. But we just use the imperial. Uh, the metric. Metric, that's what I meant. <laughs> but it does well, have the imperial on it as well. Yeah, it does, but you're basically American, aren't you? So you just use the imperial. I just use whatever I want, really. I <laughs> Various choose, attempts to there. reform the system and switch over, but none have succeeded. It would seem as though Thomas Jefferson's wish for an extra special system shall live on for the foreseeable future. It hasn't come without its consequences, though, as this confusion has led to enormous mistakes, like the Mars orbiter that was lost by NASA because of a metric system mix-up. Number two. Wow, that's an expensive mistake. Day. The United this States is the only country so that much. this confuses you the day in the taste test, isn't it? I don't, I don't know why. Like, I don't know why it annoys me because well, it shouldn't. It's I, just it's, but what, it's one of them. It's what you go up I with, isn't it? I think it's when 
it's when I think that it's written in the English way and then it's not, and I get so confused. It is. It's, it's when the month and the day are within twi- in the first 12. Yeah, after it that, can be when it gets to both. like. When it's like. When it's. Oh, like 0225. Then I know that it's talking about 25th of yeah. February. But when it's in between, we're I kind just of... can't work out if it's either English or American. Yeah, it's just got, it's whatever you go up with, isn't it? Yeah. Like Americans will assume it's the American one, we'll assume it's the British one, and it just gets it's a mess, isn't it? Oh. It's an absolute mess. <laughs> when writing out the date, puts the month before the day, and it seems to extremely aggravate the rest of the world. Most other countries write the day, then the month, then the year. The majority of countries and most of Europe and South America do do it this way. Yeah. It seems logical as the units of time are then in order from smallest to largest. Also seemingly logical is how the date is written in China and Japan, which is year, month, day, or largest to smallest. That's the best. We do that in our filing system. I know we pause a lot, so I do apologize, but that's in our filing system, basically, because the year never changes. Well, it obviously does, but you're old 22, so it does it by year, then it does it by month, and it does it by day, so you actually end up getting a perfect sorting. So if you do it by day, month that if if you got the first of a month in each year all the years are separate see the only time i ever wrote the date like that like all out like that was when i was at school and i'd write it in my books yeah because you know your little teeth but well, then i don't know because my my kid, your kids don't know the don't dates because you do a three-year-old yeah but i actually very rarely wrote it like that i'd always write it like thursday the 5th of february yeah i got you yeah I never really i don't think i've really but if, if you are ever going to do a filing system this way is definitely the best way to do you're it you're going to do all my filing stuff <laughs> <laughs> so why do we format time like this well unfortunately there's no widely accepted answer as to why this is the case the month day year order was used in britain in the 1800s but why we chose to keep it when britain ceased to do so is something of a historical mystery the best guess is likely that the order reflects how americans say dates verbally an American would be more likely to say, well, say that like it's June January 5th, 1st, yeah. Yeah. more Opposite than they would be us. likely to say oh, the 1st of January. Or no take- Depends on what day I it say, is. They were like, what's your birthday? What's the date today? April 8th. I always say that. No, you don't. You, don't I? No, you say April 8th of April. 8th. April 8th. No, I think you've that just... That sounds so normal, though. That's thinking in your head because you've just seen that, definitely. But that sounds normal, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. That, doesn't sound weird. It's, if someone said to me, which one do you say? July 1st, that's um, your birthday. Uh, I feel like that's what we say. It depends... It depends. Sometimes. I think it depends. We switch. It depends between. on the situation. But if someone says to you them two dates and then say which one do you say, I won't be able to say which one I say. Because yeah, I'm thinking about it too much. But you, we definitely do say the one where we go first of July or something. I feel like sometimes I do say July first though. Oh yeah, we mix it up a little bit, but we use the the first of July more than what you would do is July first. And you only think of July first because you're thinking of my birthday. If I just went to you, what's the day today? And you you'd go to me the seventh of March. No, you would go March seventh. Oh, you would definitely. I'm, why are you even arguing the fact that I'm I'm American? Oh, yeah, you're also American, but you're dead 100% said 7th for March. Conversation <laughs> then could Not simply sad. be a way of writing out what would be the most conversational. Number one, having a drinking age of 21. This, right, a 20-year-old I have European an issue about this. Apologies for pausing so much. <laughs> Not an issue, I don't have an issue. Right. Okay, come on, get out. It's been a long, it's been a long video. <laughs> you can drive at 16, right? Yeah? Yeah? In America, they can? I think so. I don't know. Maybe 17. I think they can. No, it's 16, 17 here. 16 in America. You can go in the army at what age in America? Is it 16 or 18? I think 16 or 17 or 18. But you can't have an alcoholic drink until you're 21. You know what? I did see a good point about this. Literally in the comments like, of a day, though. You can have a child at 16. You could, And then you can, your child could be 6 by, or 5, whatever, by the time you have a drink. I do, I do agree with you. But so, literally, I saw this in my comments literally the other day. So I'll bring it up mm. now. I don't want it to go on too long. But it did say that studies show your brain doesn't stop developing until you're 21. So before you're 21, it. you're more likely to get addicted to it than you are after 21. That was quite a good... I don't know whether that's true or not. It was in the comments. YouTube comments aren't always it makes true. makes sense. It's a good point. Let me know in the comments on that. But I see what you mean. It's a bit ridiculous that you can do something. I think it's not, it's not the fact that... you can carry a gun and stuff like that. It's not the fact that you can't drink until you're 21. It's the fact that the things that you can do before you're 21. Definitely. But like, do you know what I mean? Let us know about that point because it's quite a good point, actually. When, like, when it I annoys me that. in the UK as well, the fact that you can't drink until you're 18, but you can go fight for your country at 16. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it didn't annoy me that much, know. but I know what you mean. <laughs> me in for a shock when they fly to the US and discover that they can no longer legally drink That's alcohol. That's annoying for us going well, over. You may already know about it was this when we went to New York. American practice. What you may not know is why it is the case. 
1984, the US passed a law called the Drinking Age Act. It stated that if a state did not create a minimum drinking age of 21, they would lose up to 10% of their federal highway funding. The states wow. all took the hint and made the drinking age 21. But why 21? Well, America has a long and storied past with alcohol, including prohibition. Lawmakers yep. didn't just pick the number out of a hat. It dates back centuries to Old no, English like Common Law, <laughs> which states a person becomes a full adult age 21, at which age yeah, a person... Yeah, so that's kind here. of going along the lines as what I said there, then. Yeah, so here, I'll, your class is an adult at 18. Full yeah, adult I guess 18. so. Yeah, yeah. ...and could, among other things, vote and become a knight. Still, as shown by this map, the US is one of just a few developed countries to have a minimum legal drinking age over 18. So in fact, in know, some countries... Sorry, like, again. Okay, this is another thing, though. We're going to get flamed. That, it's going to make perfect sense. It's going to be... Like, you can't get married till you're 21, then? You can't even have a drink on your wedding? Oh, just wait till if you really that you shouldn't be that you shouldn't be that dependent on alcohol to be that annoyed about no, it. No, but you know, you know what I mean. What I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you know how silly it sounds? You, you don't even get... drink much, so. I know, but so why are you so I'm just annoyed, annoyed about everyone it? Else. Like, no, I'm not annoyed. I'm just, I'm just like, if you can get married, yeah, but you can't have a drink on your own wedding day because you're not of age. Well, if you're that bothered, just wait till you're of age. Just, you know what I mean? It's, it's not as simple about, as it's that. It's not about being bothered. It's just, it's just <laughs> you're like, so triggered by this. I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just confused. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can't get married to your 21. I think you can. You can get. I oh, think you can. Um, okay. <laughs> Belgium and Germany, 16-year-olds are allowed to purchase alcohol. Alcoholic or not, if you order a drink in America, you're probably going to get it with a lot of ice. In most other countries, you just won't see the sheer the quantity ice. of ice that you'll get in your American beverage. Granted, you'll often get ice in your drinks in many European countries, but ice-cold beverages are the default option in America. Whereas lots of people from other countries don't have the same preference, and drinks aren't always served with ice. I this cultural difference drink. is frequently debated online. It could well, be because I mean, we have, what do you mean? We have like, warm drinks all the time. No, <laughs> but like, I couldn't imagine, I don't know. We got warm water here. You've got no, but warm Sprite here. No, but like, what? like they showed it like on a beach. I on a, on a beach, yeah, but still. I really like, I prefer it with ice. If we had an ice maker in it, I'd have it with ice. All the Definitely, time. but we never put ice in it. No, because we can't <laughs> Some countries you shouldn't drink the tap water, which is where that yeah. ice came from. And in others, it just isn't common to automatically have ice with a meal at a restaurant. So, people of the internet. That is the end of the video. It's been the a super long one. The only one that confused me was the age. I think a lot, a few confused Didn't us. really confuse. Yeah, it's just more a bit. Like, not yeah. what we do. No. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. We will wrap it up because... Yeah, it's been a very long video. They like us talking. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. But we also get flamed. And you have a go at me for talking all the yeah, time. Yeah, they're going to come for me, but they're not going to come for me. Smash that like button if you enjoyed me. it, guys. Smash that subscribe button. These were things which confused us. A few of them did. A few of them didn't. A few of them were normal. Smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. And have a fantastic day. Peace.